Hello, yes, that's my garden, and uh, it's uh, January the 1st, so it's not looking great. But uh, I'm not here to show you my garden anyway. I'm here to show you this, which I've just bought, which is a pH test kit, which you can get from uh, the garden centre. I bought this one from Chrissy's Garden in Portsmouth, which is a hydroponic shop as well. And also I've got this uh, little pipette. And what I'm going to show you is uh, the pH of tap water and the pH of the rainwater that I've collected in my garden, which uh, is really acidic now. Now this uh, pH test kit does from um, four to eight. Uh, seven is um, neutral pH, so anything above that is uh, alkali, and anything below that is acidic. Um, and the color chart is on the side of the bottle. Okay, so here it is. Get the test kit on. There's a little vial, a bottle of liquid, and I bought this. Basically, what I'm going to do is run the tap for a bit. Just need one drop. Give it a little shake, then that colour you match up with the side of the bottle. And normally tap water is around uh, seven and is just above seven, so I would say that's between seven and eight there. I'm now out in the garden, and as you can see, from the uh, remnants of the puddle, it's been raining. In fact, it's been raining for the last two weeks, uh, heavily. I've been in Tenerife on holiday myself, but I've come back to find that uh, this little pot is full of water. So I'm going to take a little pH test of it right now. First of all, some of this. Yeah, like that. One drop. Give a little shake. And that's a different colour. That's about four. That's very acidic. Okay, as you can see, I have here some uh, cider vinegar, which is, what does it say? Acidity, 5%. So let's just check this with the uh, acid test. One drop, little shake, very red, that's about four as well. So that cider vinegar is the same as the rainwater that's in my garden. Right, this time I'm going to be taking the water from my own um, reverse osmosis filtering system which filters the tap water in five stages and then uh, remineralizes it let's see what the pH of this is Get 
some of that. One drop. A little shake. Look at that. And that. It's about six. That's after being filtered. Oh yeah, and finally, I just wanted to show you my uh, independent rainwater test, which I got from these people. And have a look right here. It says pH. What does that say? 4.25. That's for an independent rainwater test. Also, it shows that it contains aluminium, barium, strontium, titanium, magnesium, iron, copper, zinc, arsenic, and sulfate. These are all tested for, and they're all on there. Look. I mean, um. It's up to you if you think that's a big amount or not, but as far as I'm concerned, none of that should be in the rain. And none of it's good for us. The next thing I want to show you is the relevance of all this. Why is it important that pH is correct? Up here it says the uh, preferred pH levels, the most common range of soil pH is 4 to 8 pH. And the range for optimal availability of plant nutrients for most crops is 6.5 to 7.0 pH. Here are the pH ranges preferred by some of the common garden plants. Now first of all we've got vegetables, garden plants and herbs. Let's just have a look at the vegetables because that's most important. We need to eat them. Start off 6.5 to 7.5. You know they're all quite high. Quite a wide scope between those ranges let's face it but this is what they prefer to go at. Potato is the lowest one there. See all the others? The lowest one is potato and that's saying 4.5 to 6. So if our pH is already at 4.2, then these things are not going to be enjoying their life or producing very well. Here's just our ordinary common garden plants. Just a small list as well because there's thousands more than this. None there apart from azalea. Where's azalea? That's commonly known as an ericaceous plant, likes acid, 4.5 to 6, so it's still not 4.2, 4.2 is still too low for that plant to do well. Herbs, none of them go down that low. And this is why. Let's have a look at this chart. This shows you the different acidities. Uh, there it's saying 5, that's 6, that's 7, that's eight and that's nine. Okay, and here, this is showing you nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. That's your NPK, uh, which is on all, all fertilizers. They always show the NPK. Here's a bag of fertilizer right here. And uh, as you can see, there it is. There's the N, nitrogen, P, phosphorus, and K, potassium. Always showing you the NPK. Underneath here's all the rest. I know it's not in English because this is from um, uh, Holland or somewhere, but uh, it's iron, magnesium, zinc, boron, um, yeah, and the rest that I can't really pronounce. But they're all on there, and they're on this chart as well. And this pretty much shows you the range at which plants can uptake this. So you can see where the fat line is. That's showing you the most uptake of nutrient. And you see down here, where it's below 5, that they can't get anything. I mean, the fact of the matter is that the water structure is wrong anyway, so the plants can't take it up, and they can't take it above 7 either. So really, this is our line, this is our strip here, where plants, most of the crops, can take up food. Without that, 
they're not going to grow very well. So that really is just about the um, availability of the nutrients that are soluble in the water and the uh, uptake of the plants in general. You know, when, when it's too strong acid, the plants block it out, and when it's too strong alkaline, the plants will block it out. So there's only a thin, narrow margin where the plants can take up these nutrients. The other thing I wanted to point out to you also, uh, because that's just the availability of nutrients, is soil life. Like it says up here, soil life refers to the living organisms that live in soil and break organic materials down into simpler life forms. Soil bacteria, a microscopic soil occupant responsible for the decomposition of organic material into simpler nutrient forms that becomes food for plants, thrives at about 6.3 to 6.8 pH. So those are all the good bacteria, all the nice things that break down all the decay and eat it, uh, enzymes, things like that, which then die off and then the plant eats that as food. They all live at 6.3 to 6.8 pH. So anything out of those boundaries isn't good for them. So they don't live, so they're not helping the plant out in the soil life um, sort of world. Then it says fungi, mold and anaerobic bacteria, on the other hand, prefer a more acidic environment, making acidic soil more prone to souring and putrefaction. So therefore, when it's too acidic, molds thrive and um, bad things happen to the plants because the little life that goes on in the soil can't, can't do it, can't function, can't do its job. You know, um, it's too acidic and all you're going to get is things dying off from mould and being attacked by bad organisms. And that's pretty much it. Basically, the trees look alright from a distance, but check that out. That is not a healthy looking tree. Look at that. Not normal. Little eyes on it. So you might be one of these people that uh, doesn't eat vegetables or fruit and you're thinking, oh, well, you know, what does it matter to me? Well, you go in Asda and have a look. Uh, apart from the meat aisle and the dairy aisle, everything else has been made from plants. And even the meat needs to eat plants. And it's the meat, like the cows, that make the dairy. So without plants, there's no food. And you might also say, well, these uh, plants and trees are dying off because it's autumn. Well, yeah, you know, it was almost autumn time, September, October. But then uh, what about the pine tree? That's an evergreen. Uh, and that looks pretty bad to me. That looks like it's dying off. In fact, when you look at this picture of the pine cone, it's mouldy. So what's causing this? What makes the pH to go down into acid? You know, how does the rain have aluminium and strontium and barium in it? Doesn't just get there by accident, does it? It's time to wake up Britain. Educate yourselves.